Hello, my internet friends. My name is Katie UB10, and welcome to my week two commentary for Dance with the Stars season 28. This week was basically a roller coaster. For the first time ever, we did live voting, and the judges are going to be doing the save vote that we've been wanting for the last few seasons. Honestly, though, we could have used that shit last year to save Tanache and Juan Pablo. But hey, that's just me and a bunch of other people that are still really mad about that outcome. Anyway, some competitors were actually good this week. They really stepped up their game. And a couple of them, well, you know, they were about the same as last week. But hey, why are we stalling? Let's recap and see how everyone did. Kicking off Monday's show was James and Emma. They had a cha-cha to Lionel Richie's Dancing on the Ceiling. While it wasn't as remarkable as their tango, I still thought they did an absolutely great job. James's hips were great for cha-cha material. I loved it when they were doing the side-by-side -side dancing. It's, it's always fantastic to see that. The footwork, also fantastic. Though Bruno was correct about James misstepping in the beginning. I will admit that I saw elements of Emma's cha-cha skills from her Rashad era, but at this rate, it's sort of expected. It's basically her signature move. Not a bad dance in general. It's just... It wasn't up to par from what we got in from last week. I'll give them a 7 out of 10. Sailor and Val had a rumba to Senorita by Shawn Mendes and Camila Cabello. And while I was impressed by Sailor's movements, I thought she was not as confident while doing them at the same time. I think she was a bit timid from start to finish. Maybe it's the fact that she was dancing sexy with her mother and her boyfriend out in the audience. Especially the boyfriend. I think she didn't want to do anything in the routine that would piss him off in a sense. I was actually surprised that Val actually listened to the criticism instead of fighting the judges. But for real, can we talk about the scene during the performance? I don't know what direction they were taking that poor girl, but she cannot do a Camila note whatsoever. In general, Sailor's rumor was just not good for me. I felt like Val could have done better for this. 6 out of 10. This week, Ray and Cheryl had a fox trot to Earth, Wind, and Fire September. Stupid random fact over here. This song was one of the ways my grandpa used to keep track of his wedding anniversary with my grandma, because they were actually married on the 21st of September. My grandma always thought he was kidding, and that he actually remembered the day in general. I guess that's one secret he took with him to the grave. We'll just never know. But back to Ray. This wasn't his strongest dance. In a way, he reminded me of how Lamar did last week. Stiff and not feeling comfortable in the routine. His hand was a bit off in the beginning. And it, it just looked like he had a smile on his face. But it looked like he was just not happy with the whole routine. Cheryl usually performs well in a foxtrot. So I don't know what happened here. Especially with the camera work close to the end. I'm going to side with the judges on Ray's performance and go for a five. Allie opened up her heart and emotions this week to talk about how low her self-esteem was being called the weakest link in Fifth Harmony. Her opening up this early on is good with the voters, something another former member of that group could have done. I know that started fan base is still pissed off about her placement at the end of that season. But we are here to talk about Allie and her Vini Swalls with Sasha. It was to a classic Goo Goo Dolls song, Iris. And if we can recall, Sasha danced to that song previously with Tara Jolay and with that same dance style. Really milking that one in, huh, BC? Despite my distaste of any Fifth Harmony member in general, I thought Allie did a remarkable job. She's got some work to do on her feet, and she's got to remind herself to keep her shoulders down. Lynn noted that the rotation kept stopping and starting, and looking back on the footage, he's absolutely correct. To all of our fans that want to keep talking shit about him on Twitter, he was like this with Normani, and he's always been like this. He is not going to change to please your asses, so sit down and be humble. Overall, I'll give Allie's dance a six and a half. Mary and Brandon performed the cha-cha to one of the Queen of Souls' many hits, Think. In the package, I could have believed with my ears of what they were hearing. 
Brandon Armstrong didn't know who Aretha Franklin was? Seriously? Brandon, I am three years older than you, and I know who she was. Like, what the actual fuck? How? Why? I don't understand. But ignoring that comment, Mary was sassy in her cha-cha. But it was a mess. There was a lot of mistakes, a lot of, a lot of flubs. I, I, I was just like, oh, Mary, no, child. What is you doing? Do you remember Tamar's deer in the headlights face back in season 21? She was doing that exact face in 2019. I respect her and her legendary career, but this cha-cha was not it for me. 5 out of 10. Sorry, Miss Mary. Well, Gleb got to do a pasta doble with Lauren, something that he hasn't done on the show since 2016. He called Demi Lovato's song Confident, when it's really called Confident. But seriously, where was any of that on the dance floor? Honestly, it felt underwhelming. And of course, it wouldn't be a Glove Sevchenko routine without a sexy silhouette portion. People can be pissed off at Lynn all they want, but I was fully on board with him when it came to this dance. And Carrie Ann noted that her shoulders were a bit up a few times. She's gonna have to work on keeping them down like Allie. <sighs> Another notion I want to make. She was off time close to the end. It, it just really bothered me. I don't know why, but it really did. Overall, Lauren Gleb is getting a six from me. <sighs> is the window talking? <laughs> Next! Somewhere up in the clouds, I don't know if Prince is pleased or not, with Karamo doing a quick step to Let's Go Crazy. To give him credit, it was a slight improvement from last week. His body contact, though, with Jenna, it was going in and out throughout the whole thing. It's something they're going to have to work on. It looked like the cameraman was more focused on making Jenna look good compared to Karamo. Honestly, I hope they step up their game and deliver a solid routine with movie night. Because realistically, it seems like they're mixed in the lost shuffle. I know he's very popular with Queer Eye fans, but I don't know how the votes will go for Karamo as time passes on. I'll give him a six. Kate and Pasha foxtrotted to my grandparents' favorite Frank Sinatra song, Fly Me to the Moon. Watching them dance took me back a bit to catching my folks dance to it themselves in our living room. And I couldn't help but shed a couple of tears, and I had a huge smile on my face. Kate definitely listened to what the judges had told her, and she came back strong this week. She was smooth and full of elegance and grace, yet had a touch of quirkiness. She noted to Pasha in the package that this is one of her favorite songs as well, and I think she did Sinatra good with this routine. I had a chuckle watching Daniela and Keo be astronauts in the background. With this performance, I really do think that Pasha proved himself worthy of why he got a pro spot. I, I love this one all around. This is probably one of my favorites from this episode. Seven and a half for this pair. Don't fall in love with me, kid. Too late, Kate. Too late. Now here is what you call a real comeback from last week. Kel and Whitney had a samba to Bobby Brown's Every Little Step. He basically dedicated this dance to his father, who recently underwent brain surgery because of an aneurysm. And... That shit is really scary, and I hope his dad is doing well. It, it just broke my heart to see him cry and be vulnerable. I can really tell that he has a really strong relationship with his dad, and I just hope he does really well with his health from this point on. Oh my god, you guys. This was a complete 180 from last week. He was dancing like he was in New Kids on the Block. You know what I mean? Whitney knows how to kill it with the samba, and this one just proved it once more again. There was plenty of samba content and plenty of rhythm. The lines were outstanding. 
this this right here is probably one of my favorite dances for the guys this week. I couldn't get enough of it. Like, I was just shocked that Kel could actually prove that he is worthy of being here. He gets a seven and a half from me. Holy shit. I'll give Lamar credit. At least he is trying here, especially with his memory loss. It's more than what Master P could give on this show, honestly. Anyway, he and Pita had a salsa. I don't remember who the song artist was or what the song was. All I remember, it was a salsa. And while it wasn't the greatest thing, I wouldn't say it wasn't the worst either. I almost screwed that line up and I don't care. We're gonna stick with this one. You know, I can truly see he was doing the best job he can. But in general, you also gotta take the time to buckle down and memorize the steps. I really hope he does well in the next few weeks, because this isn't looking good for him. I don't want to be the bad guy, but for me, Lamar gets a three. And closing out the night was last week's opener, Hannah and Alan. They were given a Viennese waltz to Taylor Swift's latest hit, Lover. While I give many Bachelor and Bachelorette contestants a lot of shit of why they're in the media and then take it on Dance with the Stars if they're selected, I have to admit that Hannah is probably the best one out here by far. This Viennese waltz was more relaxed and the scenery was absolutely lovely. The rotations were natural, the extensions were beautiful, everything was just graceful. There was plenty of content. Alan did a great job teaching her this routine. She says in the package that she used to do ballet as a child, so there is the dance background that most people will bitch and complain about this season. I still can't shake the feeling that not only other producers are trying to force a showmance, but the fact that they want Hannah as their frontrunner. She seems sweet, but I don't want someone forced to paw me, you know? Like, you know, Melissa Rycroft back in the All-Star season. Yeah, that didn't go so well. Despite my overthinking, I'm giving her and Alan an 8. I was actually excited about the judges' save and how it was going to play out by the end of the show. But as soon as Lamar and the clown were announced as safe, this was literally my reaction. What is going on here? Once Kate Flannery was called safe, it was between Ray Lewis and Mary Wilson. And with a 2-1 to one vote, it was decided that Mary and Brandon were the first pairing to be eliminated. Now you fucked up! I'm gonna be completely honest. The judges were wrong on this one. I thought Mary had more to give than Ray. I guess they're just playing fairies with Cheryl in a sense. Poor Brandon got fucked over once again. He really deserves better treatment from this show. I really feel like they're doing to him what they did to Keo, and honestly, it's just not right. I was really looking forward to see if Mary made it to most memorable year week, because I wanted to just find out if she was going to talk some shit on Diana Ross and talk about the death of Florence Ballard. I know there are people that blame Diana for Florence's demise, and I just wanted to hear Mary's input, if that was going to be. We'll never know now, but I still want to know. It kills me on the inside. I know she's going to do well with her career, and she's going to keep doing her thing and keep working on her grind. She's going to be just a-okay. Brenda, baby, I love you, and there's always next year. You just deserved better than what you got in the end. Next week is movie night. Basically, everybody is going to be dancing to songs from their favorite movies. Now, I don't expect much from Spicer, mainly because he's just going to disappoint everybody no matter what he does. On a more positive note, Kim Johnson Herjavec is hosting the official podcast for Dancing with the Stars. I've listened to it myself already, and she is absolutely fantastic with her interviews and her questions. She is the right person to do this podcast, considering of her history with the program. If you want to listen to it, it's called Dance with the Stars Official Podcast, and you can most likely find it on your Apple or your Spotify accounts. Not an ad, but I wish it was. Kim, if you're watching, call me. <laughs> so sound off in the comments below. What did you guys think of this week's episode? Who were your favorites? Are you surprised about Lamar and Spicer being here for week three? What are your thoughts on Mary and Brandon's elimination? If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. 
And if you're new to my channel and you want to see more of me in the future, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be alerted when I upload new content. Until next week, take care everybody.